Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt Ellis, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Welcome back to our seven day discus video series. Today we are on day five and we are hitting a milestone because we are finally getting into the back of the circle. Last week we did a lot of mirror turn stuff and we were talking about the middle of the circle. Now we're talking about the back of the circle and transitioning from the back to the middle. And the way we do that is pretty simple. I like to use two drills. The first is the wall drill and the second is the South African. So like always, you're gonna start your day of practice today dealing with a day four recap. And really it's kind of a four plus because now is when your daily recaps are gonna be a little bit more custom to your team. So for example, you might not wanna just go over what you did in day four because day four was all mirror turn stuff. So you might wanna do some standing throw stuff then incorporate your mirror turns, then incorporate some drills that you think you need to work more on with your specific team at practice. So say you wanted to do you know, more broomstick drills. Stay, say you wanted to do a lot more reset drills. Say you wanted to break down that uh, power position, standing throw position, and work on grounding. You can do that. Just create kind of a custom recap. You know from working with your team what they need to work on the most, so touch on that during that recap, all right? Once that recap is over, then we're gonna go into the wall drill. And I want you to think of the wall drill just like a driving mirror turn. So essentially, it's just a drive across the circle with a mirror turn at the end. And using a wall, we're gonna explain sort of where that wall appears in the circle and in your throw. Using that wall is a great way of teaching your athletes how to drive across that circle and not spin. So again, we are gonna be driving face first, chest first into a wall. And again, this teaches the thrower to drive and not spin. But again, there's about six habits here that we wanna teach and that happen in that wall drill. So the wall drill is really an all encompassing drill. Give credit where credit is due. I learned the wall drill about 10, 11 years ago from John Godina. He had actually come and done a seminar at our original gym right up the street. Uh, it was crazy because only like 10 throwing coaches showed up to it, which is nuts. But John Godina was here doing a clinic and John, from what I'm, I've heard over the years, learned this from Art Venegas. So just giving credit where credit is due, that's where I learned the drill, and now I'm passing it on to you. So the wall drill teaches zero support, getting both feet off the ground. It teaches how you are landing on a turned power foot with that right foot as a right-handed thrower pointed toward three o'clock. It teaches the athlete to be patient and have some patience as they're driving out of the back. It also teaches that very specific strength needed, that foot, ankle, shin, and calf strength to land on that turned power foot. It teaches them balance, and it teaches them that idea of landing down on the ball of the foot, not skidding into the mirror turn, not landing really far back behind the foot, but landing down with their weight on the power foot. From there, we're gonna move on to the South African. So the South African, if you think of the wall drill as a driving mirror turn, then the South African is just a driving wall drill. Basically, we're just putting that drive, we're just putting that kind of run, that explosion at the beginning of the wall drill and then going into the mirror turn, okay? So what we wanna do is think of the South African as a snapshot of the full throw. So if you were to take a full throw, take an elite thrower, full throw, and we go frame by frame by frame, there is a frame of their throw, a frame of that video that is gonna look identical to the starting position of the South African. So we wanna start as a right-handed thrower, the left foot is gonna be pointing at six o'clock, right down to the middle of that front rim of the discus circle, and your right foot is gonna be up on the heel. It's a little different from what you might've seen before, but this is how I teach it, and it translates really well into the throw. Then we're gonna have the thrower lead with the inside of their right knee, the inside of their right foot, with this wide right leg, this big, wide, sweeping motion. Not a short little sprint where both knees come together, but keeping those knees as far apart as possible with that nice, big, wide sweep. 
And finally, at the last second, we're going to turn that power foot, turn that right foot over to three o'clock, which is going to initiate that mirror turn and then finally put the throw at the end. So as you can see, we're putting a lot of puzzle pieces together, okay? And, and this really is, you have to think of it like a puzzle. Just like when you put a puzzle together, you see the full picture, but you can also see all of the individual pieces all connected. And that's what I want you to think of as a coach to connect those puzzle pieces together. You're not trying to make a full throw, okay? You're trying to take a bunch of different pieces and connect them all together to create that image of a full throw. Okay, so let's turn the camera around. Let's get started showing you the wall drill and showing you the South African. Okay, so let's talk about the wall drill for a second. Now, like I said before, the wall drill is like driving face first or driving chest first into a wall. And we're actually gonna be using that wall right there to explain all this to you. But what does that wall represent? Well, if you take a look here in my circle, I have painted a white line from three o'clock to nine o'clock. And I did this on purpose. I think all throwing circles should have this white line from three o'clock to nine o'clock. If you can imagine, kind of like if you watch NFL, they say a touchdown is when the ball crosses kind of that path of the goal line. So the goal line goes all the way up to the heavens. And as soon as the ball crosses that goal line, then they score. This, you can imagine, like that wall. Just like there was a wall coming straight up from the middle of that three o'clock to nine o'clock line going straight up to the ceiling, and there was just a wall right here. As you drive out of the back of the circle, that's what the wall drill represents. You're gonna be driving face first into that wall. Just like you're gonna go splat up against the wall, you're driving face first, and the wall represents that line right down the middle. So I'm gonna show you this from a few different angles. You're gonna get some weird aspects of the gym, like weird <laughs> video of spots of the gym you've never seen before. But all you need to do to do a wall drill is just find an open wall. So we're gonna use this wall right here. And basically what you wanna do is set up away from the wall a little bit more than like your power position. So I'm gonna go here just about four feet away from the wall. It doesn't have to be exact. You're gonna play with this a little bit. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna point your left foot directly at the wall. All right, you're gonna have your hands up in front of you just like this, and then you're gonna drive head first into the wall. Now it's a little scary because you think to yourself, oh my God, I am gonna crash face first in the wall, I'm gonna break my nose, I'm gonna knock my teeth out, I'm gonna go face first into this wall. But reality, what you're doing is you're driving into that wall. You can stop pretty gentle up against that wall. All right, so let's take a look real quick and see how this resembles the back of the circle driving to the middle. So the first thing we wanna talk about is zero support. So zero support, both of your feet come off the ground. You're not walking to the middle of the circle with both feet still on the ground. You're driving to the middle. Both feet come off the ground. So it teaches your athletes a better idea of zero support. The other thing we wanna focus on is turning that power foot. So the power foot, again, as a right-handed thrower, that's my right foot, is gonna be pointed toward three o'clock. So the toe and the knee are pointed toward three o'clock. So as we drive out of the back into the mirror turn, we're gonna watch that right toe and knee that's pointing over toward three o'clock. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna notice how it teaches the athlete to be patient and drive. A lot of your athletes, when they start out, they're gonna start to turn their body this way, like they're spinning, and they're gonna try to go into the wall butt first. Not, oh, almost, I went shoulder first. Be patient. Boom, right here. We're gonna go into that wall chest first, and we're gonna be patient and hold our body driving right down the middle. One of the biggest issues that you're gonna have when you teach your athletes how to rotate or do a full throw in a discus is gonna be that a lot of times they're dropping their heel in the middle of that throw. And that's something that we see all the time with throwers is when they get to the middle, they try to land on the ball of their foot and they drop their heel. And I hear it all the time from throwers, I hear it all the time from coaches where they say, I'm trying, like I'm, I'm landing on the ball of the foot, I'm trying to stay on the ball of foot, 
but my heel just keeps dropping. And really it takes a lot of specific strength to get in that position and be able to hold that position. And in order to develop that strength, you're gonna to need to do repetitions. Okay, so repetitions are going to be key. You wanna make sure that you are having your athletes do a lot of repetitions of drills like the wall drill to get that very specific foot, ankle, shin, and calf strength to land in that position. Because again, your athletes might be very strong, but they might not have that specific strength to land on the ball of that power foot, okay? To stay here on the ball of the power foot. Even if I do this here for just 10 seconds, 20 seconds, I can start to feel my calf. I can start to feel my shin, my ankle, my feet start to really work to keep this position. So we wanna stay nice and strong in that position. We have to develop the strength in order to do this drill. Now, if you're just doing, say, a throw in the circle and you're with 15 of your teammates and you're just getting in and taking one throw and then 15 more people have to get in, you're only getting about one rep every 15 to 20 minutes. That's not that good, okay? So by doing something like a wall drill, you can repeat and do 30, 40, 50 of these in probably the course of maybe 20 minutes get that specific strength and train the calf and train the shin and train the feet and the ankles to be strong enough to land in that position. The other issue that I see is a lot of athletes don't have the balance to land on the ball of their foot. So they go to land on the ball of their foot, they're strong enough to hold this position, but when they're getting in this position, they're kind of all over the place. And you can see it when their foot touches down, they're wobbly, they don't know how to put their weight on top of it, they're trying to find their balance, they're, they're too far back, they're too far forward, and they're moving in the circle, they're losing their balance all over the place. This is gonna teach them that balance. Because remember, just like we said when we were looking at the whiteboard, this teaches them to go down on their foot. So imagine if you were just landing out of a jump. Your feet are underneath you and you're balanced. If you landed out of that jump and you had too much weight forward, you're gonna fall forward, okay? If you do it backwards, you're gonna fall backwards. Side to side, you're gonna fall side to side. So this teaches you that balance. We're coming out of the back of the circle, we're here, boom, we're down on the foot. We're not going forward and we're not holding ourselves back. We see this a lot too, where athletes kind of hold their head back, hold their shoulders back, and they try to keep this kind of recliner position here. Now they've got too much weight behind them. We want to see here, down on that foot. The weight going straight down onto that foot balanced on the ball of their foot so then they can go on and do that mirror turn. So let me move the camera. I'm gonna show you a bunch more of these wall drills and we're gonna put it all together for you. Keep in mind what I said. I'm gonna show you maybe 10 in a row to give you an idea of what your athletes should look like when they're at practice. Okay, here we go, wall drill time. Let's give you like maybe five from here. Let's give you five from some different angles so you can take a look. I'll move you around the gym, show you what this looks like. We're here, hands are up, left foot pointed at the wall, my right foot is behind me, I'm getting ready to attack, and I'm working on turning my right foot, turning my right knee, getting into zero support, and not smashing my face into the wall. You can see that time I kind of dropped my heel. Let's do it again. Boom, that's much better, nice and gentle. Backing up, boom. Okay, my comfort level's increasing a little bit more. Now I can start to kind of get aggressive and attack. I'll back up a little bit more too. Boom, going right across. Head down the middle, face down the middle, chest down the middle. And take a look how just like the mirror turn, I'm starting to bring in my left knee. I'm starting to squeeze those knees together. Squeeze the knees together, bring my left foot through, because I know after this, I'm basically just gonna do a mirror turn. So I don't know what this is, maybe nine, 10 of these. That's how quick and easy it is. That's how you can get in the repetitions. Let's show you from a different angle. Okay, a little bit different of an angle, but let's, let's take a look. We go from here, hands up, working on driving face first into the wall. 
landing on the ball of the right foot. Squeezing my knees together, ball of the right foot. That's pretty good. Squeeze my knees together, ball of the right foot. Squeeze my knees together, ball of the right foot. Head first, chest first, ball of the right foot, not dropping the heel and landing with my weight down on the foot. One more, boom, landing with my weight down on the right foot. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that wall drill and we're gonna transfer that wall drill here into the circle. Now remember, the wall is pretty much this three o'clock to nine o'clock line. So if I start in the back of the discus circle, let's do that wall drill using that imaginary wall that goes from three o'clock to nine o'clock. It looks like this. Boom, there we go. We're in the middle. Driving through and we're in the middle. You can see a lot of your athletes are gonna wanna take it from here and spin their butt around twirl their butt around, try to get their butt to the official as quickly as possible. But we want to see that drive here, wall drill, landing down, landing balanced on the ball of the right foot. It's super tough to do in the circle, as you can see, trying to stop yourself, much easier to do when you're using the wall. So from here, we need to get set up in that South African position. And to do this, you've got to have a little bit of knowledge of the full throw. So imagine we're starting in the back. Imagine we're turning out of the back of that circle. And now we're getting ready to drive. What does that look like? First things first, my non-power foot as a right-handed thrower, my left foot is pointing right at six o'clock. Okay, six o'clock, middle of the toe board or middle of the front rim of that discus circle. My right foot, as you can see here, is up on the heel, okay? The reason it's up on the heel is because as you take your full throw, you wanna lead with the inside of the knee and the inside of that right, that right foot and not turn and run. If you pinch the knees together and turn this into a sprint down the middle, it's gonna lead to a lot of issues when you get into the middle and front of that circle. We wanna see the knees really, really wide, we want to see you sweeping that right leg around and we want to see you sweep with the inside of that right knee, the inside of that right foot. So if you start with your foot on the ground or if you start like you're going to run or sprint down the middle, you're going to be teaching your athletes some bad habits. Teach them correctly the first time. The other thing I want you to notice is that my right foot is not behind my left foot. It's already come around. It's in front of the left foot and it's ready to go. It's ready to attack. The other thing I want you to notice, my left arm. My left arm is even with my left toe and my left knee. It's not out here whipping around, turning this into a spin. It's even and it's moving with my left arm, knee and foot all going together. I'm not separated. I'm not letting this left arm pull me to the left, drag me to the left side of that circle and spin me or whip me around. We're gonna stay right here from this position, the South African. All we're gonna do, drive just like the wall drill and then put the mirror turn on the end. It looks like this. And then from here, don't finish the throw. Go right back into the circle get set up on the heel, left arm, left knee, left toe, all pointing here. We're gonna sweep with the inside of that right leg. We're gonna sweep in, boom, boom. We're gonna land in that power position. Let's do one more. Here, up on the heel, we're gonna sweep in, boom, boom, landing in that good power position. I want to show you real quick what happens if you do drive with your knee first. A lot of times we'll see coaches teach this where they want to run or drive knee first. They want the knees together, the toes together, and they want you to run down that circle. Well, what happens if you watch my feet, my right foot typically is going to over rotate. 
So instead of being at three o'clock, I'm gonna run, and now my foot is pointing towards one o'clock or 12 o'clock. And when I do that, all of my weight is gonna shift and fall towards the front of that circle. If you sweep with the inside of your right foot, the inside of the right leg, at the last second, you're gonna be turning your foot to three o'clock, just like in the wall drill. You're gonna be balanced on that foot. Now that your weight is on top of your foot, now you're able to actually turn, keep your weight balanced, and then go through and finish your throw. So that's how you wanna end practice, is doing South Africans with a discus in your hand. You're gonna start with that left foot pointing down towards the middle of the rim, towards six o'clock. Your right foot is gonna be outside, ready to drive, ready to go. And then from there, all you're gonna do, pull the discus back and then throw. So you're gonna pull the discus back, maybe do it a couple times just so they're ready. When it's back all the way, we're gonna drive off that left leg, pull it back and drive just like the wall drill here boom, and then have them go through and throw. So show you a full one, this is what it's gonna look like. Here, pull back, wall drill, boom, throw. Pretty simple stuff, nothing too crazy. Again, we're looking at pieces of a puzzle. We're trying to put this together. We have two more videos to go, and in those videos we're gonna put everything together, we're gonna to show you exactly what it looks like, and you're gonna be able to see that snapshot. Like if it was a frame by frame video, there's gonna be a part of that video that looks like the South African. There's gonna be a part of the video that looks like the wall drill. And that's what we're gonna show you when we get into our last two videos. So make sure if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. And click the notification bell as well so you are notified of all of our future videos. Once this series is over, we're gonna be doing a lot of question and answer videos. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and we will get to your questions in a future video. Thanks again for watching. I hope this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I will see you in our next video.